So I'm going to look at this thing today. This is a 24 volt power supply rated up to 330 volts. This was in use in a piece of equipment. Apparently it just died one day. No known reason why. They replaced it and the equipment carried on working. They gave it to me said hey do you want this? And I went yeah sure. It's always interesting looking at bits of gear. Maybe I can fix it, maybe I can't. Maybe it's just an interesting exploration to a piece of equipment. So we'll put it apart and have a look. Now I can smell it's burnt. When I gave it to me I said I can smell it. So it's definitely blown up. It's not just dead. It's not just you know a fuse popped or something. I had that before for another piece of gear they gave me, another power supply. It's just a pop fuse. I put the fuse in and it worked after that and it couldn't fault it. It must have been like some kind of surge or something and that was alright after that. So that was a nice score. But this one is definitely burnt so this one should be a bit more interesting than that. Get it my handy dandy iFixit screwdriver set. I should actually get a hold of iFixit and see if they want to send me one of those things they sent Dave. That little portable soldering iron, that looked pretty cool. Obviously it's a mains gear so be careful if you're working mains gear. You can easily zap yourself. The energy stored inside the capacitors could still be there. You can still get a nicely whack. So if you ever get any gear like this, be careful what you're doing. Is that cross it? No, it's not. It's a star as well. Excellent. It's also got twisted tabs on the back. Which aiming them, so they're probably going to break off eventually. Uh huh. All right. There's a bit of a witness mark. Excellent. Just a quick visual inspection. There's a switch here for voltage selection that is set to the correct voltage. So in our country it's 230 volts, 240 volts, and it's set to 230, so that's fine. So we also have this catastrophic explosion over here, which is a capacitor, which is also extruded off the board. And right next to it is what's left of a PTC. You can see that that has exploded and disappeared and that capacitor should not look like that. So that's had a, quite a surge go through there. Now you may find that we can fix this capacitor, replace that with something, I don't know what, and maybe replace a fuse and it might start back up again if there's no other bad damage. Obviously we've got a hole through the ball but that's not a big deal. You know, we can fix that. <laughs> no, seriously, we can. It doesn't matter, does it? So I was going to desolder this cap and see what we can salvage from it. I haven't checked the voltages. This thing's been sitting around for weeks and weeks. I highly doubt there's any voltage left in sitting anything. And I should have my extractor going. This is going to get noisy. Come on, drop out. But it's not dropping out either. Yeah, see, that ain't meant to look like that. Ugh. Ooh, that's not looking good. I mean, should we bother? I mean, it's just a power supply. I mean, yes, we can fix it. But that, that uh, PTC is obviously blown apart because that's in series with that capacitor, which has exploded. That's a hell of a lot of uh, dissipation. Now, that's all on the primary side. These are secondary capacitors, that's primary capacitors. So that means the rest of the power supply is probably fine. Because it's all just after the bridge rectifier, so maybe the bridge rectifier is blown. It's possible. Let's take this other cap out as well. Penalties. I probably should make a note of that, shouldn't I? AC branded. 250 volt, 1000 microfarad. No temperature ratings. Anyway, so negative is the square pad there. Let's take this one out too. Just to get out of the way at least. Fresh solder helps to get them out because these are made with lead free solder these days. It doesn't melt at such a low temperature. So, putting some leaded solder on reduces the light melting temperature, makes them easy to get out. So, we'll try wiggling this one out and then clearing the holes. Might be an easy way of doing it. Sometimes it is. That doesn't want to move. Let's try the other way. There we go.
there you go. Sometimes that's his way of doing it. And clear this out too. Now we can see better. I don't know. Should we fix it? Should we? Or should we just not bother? Hmm. So over here is the main bridge rectifier coming in, okay? So you've got the AC going into there, and the DC coming out, probably from the two sides. So we've got one comes to this side of the cap, and that cap there comes along this way, which is through this switch, which is changing its selection. So this is obviously doing the voltage side of it, the input voltage side. And the other side, I can't see where that goes. This stuff maybe it's open or short, so maybe it's connecting to that track there or leaving it open. It maybe changing that way, I'm not sure. So the other side of the cap is that side. So that's the main supply coming in here. I'm not quite sure how that's configured. Anyway, that cap there, that cap there, and these two go together, so they're effectively in series together. Maybe series, I'm not sure how the topology goes actually. Because we've got a negative side there, negative side there. Maybe it's parallel. They could be parallel, actually. Or it could be a centre reference, like a split supply. Could be doing it that way. Could be doing a split supply as it gets up to here. To this stuff. What we could really do to fix this is cut this track off here. And try and get rid of all this carbon here, see how bad that's going to this point. There are a couple of small tracks around here, but not too bad, not too close. Might be far enough away. You basically cut that piece out. Where the carbon is, you cut that bit out. Because the carbon becomes conductive, so you can't leave any carbon behind. Because it'll just keep on tracking and, and get worse and worse, and you wouldn't have gained anything, it'll just burn itself out. So I think it is fixable if we can do this. We I mean, could cut that track off and just run a jumper wire between those to replace that track. That's certainly doable. And then the junction between that pad from that capacitor comes up from that cap, goes to that on there, right? So that's going positive, that cap to negative, that cap. So yeah, it must have split rail supply. Has to be. So that's negative. That's the center point, like a ground reference, because that's going to there. So that's the positive, most positive there. So we could easily fix this if the carbon hasn't gone too far into those smaller traces. So I've been digging around, trying to find some caps I can put in here. I don't have the right ones. These are way too small in capacity, 450 volts, so the voltage is twice as much as well. But this is the, the most suitable thing I've got to hand. You would never believe that I do not have enough capacitors. I mean, I don't understand how this could possibly happen. How can I not have enough capacitors? It's just not right. So I'm going to have to try these ones as substitutes, just to prove the power supply works or not. I think before I put those in, I should check the bridge rectifier and see if that's still functional or not. It's probably a wise thing to do. Well, that's looking promising so far. Now, pinouts. What's the pinouts on this thing? There to there. There to there. There to there. There to there. Shouldn't I get something different to that? Why am I getting three connections? I'm not getting any shorts, so that's the main thing there. So that must be a common point there, yep. There, there, there. I'm getting three connections. There must be something, some other circuitry which is affecting that somewhere. But there's no shorts, so that's the main thing, that's close enough. So that's Martyr's 10N271K. Okay, what does that mean? Any ideas? I'm gonna cut this track here back, so it's out of the way. Cut that off, and I'll link it on the back of the board. Doesn't wanna cut, this scapel's a bit rubbish. These are gonna peel back as well, and then just put the wire link across. Okay, so wire link between those, fit that capacitor in, link between that one, get it right, yes, that one and that positive of that one. And then we can try powering it up and see if it goes bang or not. 
That's our temporary capacitors in place. Now I'll link them all together. Do these jumpers on this side. So I'm just taking this rectifier out because I'm not sure that it's actually okay. I'm about 90% sure it's all right, but I'm not 100% sure it's all right. So I'm going to pull the thing out and have a look. And unfortunately, the tip of my iron right now is a bit on the small side for this. I better change that. I can't get onto it. This button, when I go to record, I'll show it again. <laughs> You know, recording, you know, the, the red little red thing comes up in the corner there. All right. Oh, jeez. So, pull the bridge out to check the bridge out, right? So, we can check the bridge to make sure it's not faulty. Because in circuit, we're getting some weird readings. It wasn't entirely clear whether the bridge was okay or not. So, if you look at the bridge, you got positive, AC, AC, negative. Can't really see it on camera here, but trust me, it's there. Right, see those? So based on that, you know what's, what you've got to do. So from the positive to the AC side, you'll get nothing. Positive to the other AC, you'll get nothing. Then the negative to the AC, you get nothing. Negative to the other AC, you'll get nothing. If you reverse the leads around, then you should get diode drops. So negative, the positive lead, or the red lead, negative, AC side, AC side, and then the positive of the back lead, AC side, AC side, Nothing wrong with that bridge, that's fine. So I remounted the bridge, I put some thermal compound behind it because it didn't have any originally. There's no harm in doing that, can only help it. And then we can hook up AC and see if it goes bang. It could go bang. Could go with a whimper, could go with a big puff of smoke. Or it could just be completely dead, nothing will happen. Now something I haven't looked for yet is any AC fuses. Looks like some transistors over here. They're probably fine, but the stuff which blew up is on the main AC input, so after that should be fine. I haven't looked for any other circuitry which could be blown. Not yet anyway. Probably should have a quick look around. In case we find something. So the AC input comes onto this board over here. So there's a fuse down here and it checks see if that fuse is okay. It is. The fuse is not blown. So that means the AC input should be passing through, which I think is coming through these, through the common mode filter down to this section. So that was on the AC feed which blew out that one there which was damaged. That one wasn't blown out, it's the AC feed into the bridge rectifier. And obviously this is the, the link we put in to keep the capacitors linked together like they're supposed to be. I don't think I've missed anything. I hope I haven't missed anything. I'm actually thinking maybe I should link that PTC. One side of that goes to that leg which blew out. So that one there, maybe I should link across here as well. It does have a resistor on there. Maybe it's got a sensing. It may have sensing on this. Maybe I'll we'll put a link in there as well, just to be sure. But we're close. We're very close. I'll be ready. I'm not. I'm not sure I'm ready. I'm gonna cover my eyes up. If it goes bang, let me know. Oh. Okay. Power out. Five. Four. Two. Minus seven, zero. Nope, popped the fuse on my power supply. Instantly died, just like that. Well, that's disappointing. I heard a big overload on the And sure enough, the fuse popped. So that was a big load. Wind this up. It's doing 10 volts right now. 20 volts. Yep, getting 25 volts there. AC, DC output, yeah, there we go from there to there. Step and touch it, it's not good. 26 volts DC, so there is something happening there. The hopping meter's just turned on, it's pulling out one amp on the hopping meter at 30 volts. It's pulling out one amp. Where's that power going? So it's 33 watts going somewhere. Let me get my thermal camera out. In 33 watts, you should be able to see that. Ooh. Definitely. There's heat there. Yeah, that's concerning. Those two caps I put in are showing as being really hot. Now, question is, did I do something stupid and put them in backwards? Did I? Did I put those in backwards? The fact that both caps are getting hot makes you wonder. Let's 
Yes, I bloody did. I'm an idiot. That went the other way around. Why didn't you guys tell me? <laughs> oh, man. Something so basic. And I had it in my head that the square pads were the negative. Obviously, the square pad was the positive. I bet it's still hot across these, isn't it? Well, maybe not, because they've gone backwards. So, you know. No. No, that's right. Okay. You're not really bad at telling me I'm making a mistake. That's what you're here for. It could have been worse, the caps could have exploded. That would have been really disappointing. Because the one which has got all the burnt out garbage on it was the one which is where the hole is. Which is the other way around. Yeah. Let's see if this is going to work. Now I've turned the capacitors around the right way. I'm not an idiot at all. Anyway, let's wind that back down. Go bring it up slightly from zero. Let's go and see if anything horrible happens. So far, so good. 37 degrees at 20 volts. Wind up some more. You know what I should do? I should absolutely plug the plug in. <laughs> I'm saying, why is there no power? Yeah. Okay, we'll do this again. Starting at 5 volts. There we go. Bring it up. So 37 degrees is where it's sitting at right now from the previous heat. So I've got 30 volts. I've got no power going in to speak of. 50 volts going in, still no power. Nothing getting particularly hot in there, is there? There's no power consumption. 80 volts going in, 90 volts. I saw a little surge just then. 100 volts, no power consumption. Saw a little surge again. When I'm putting the voltage up, I'm seeing a little surge. But it's probably the capacitor is absorbing the power. 140 volts, 160. You're now drawing half a watt, 160. Let's have a little look. Nothing's looking horrendous so far. 180 volts is putting out about 300 milliwatts and dropping down again. 190 volts, 210, it's putting out half a watt. We're basically operating voltage now and we're looking good so far. It's sitting there at basically 400 milliwatts. Okay, let's go up to 230 volts. It's putting out 600 milliwatts. Yeah, that's not looking horrendous. Okay, let's see if there's an output power. I'm getting nothing there. There's no output. That's not helpful. There's no green light to say volts are okay either. So there's no output from it. There's more problems with this yet. Damn it. So I just checked across these output capacitors. There's actually no voltage at all in those output caps. So it's possible that it's not switching, which means those could be dead. It's possible. Yeah, well. Well, I'll start looking a bit closer at this and see if it doesn't work. Can you see that transistor there, which isn't quite complete? Let me get something to point with. Just like to do, that's what comes to hand. That one right there. See that? Part of the top of the transistor's gone. Now, unfortunately, I can't actually see what that is because the markings are gone, which is kind of inconvenient. But it's got a short between the bottom two pins. I reckon that's probably why it doesn't work. You've got those capacitors up there, you've got some staining on them. They aren't shorted. And there's a resistor there, which is also looking a bit mucky. Again, I can't actually see what that actually is. Not yet, I have to get in the microscope. Um, that's measuring 300 ohms. Can't quite see what the numbers actually are. I think it says 8201. So, I don't know, there may be something else going on, but I think I'm going to write this off because I don't even know what that part is. I, mean, I could take a guess, I could drop an MPN or a PMP transistor in there and see if it comes to life, but I think I'm at the point where I'm just going to write it off. So that was an interesting experiment, I suppose, to see if we could get this thing to revive. I mean, we got it partially revived a bit, which blew up, mainly blew up. We got working, but, I mean, if I really wanted to stick in here a bit longer, I could probably solve it and trace it through, but there may even be circuit diagrams for this power supply. I don't know. I doubt it, but there could be. I haven't looked. I might actually have a look before I do completely write it off, but I think it's a case of forget it, throw it away. I mean, it's just a power supply. It's not anything particularly specialist or rare. It's just a 24 volt power supply. Part of this video was to just experiment and to see if we could get it back. I mean, if it wasn't for these other parts which were gone, then I think we probably could get it back because we repaired the initial main damage. Yeah, no, oh well, it's the way it goes sometimes. It's, it's just bad luck. Hopefully, it's still an interesting video. Subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. Other videos to watch down there, hopefully, more successful ones. This is a failed repair. I don't often get failed repairs. And there's a Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy a new power supply. Well, actually, I don't need another power supply. I've got a bunch of these things, but, you know, you get the idea. Guess later.